Providing a quality early childhood education opportunity for your children in your district, it's going to have the greatest impact academically, socially, emotionally, financially for your district. Our goal is to expand two preschool programs every year and it's built into our budget and we continue to look to braid funds as much as we can to expand those programmings and look at other partners. Again, at the end of the day, it's about benefiting kids and what does that look like and feel like. And again, I think this is the right work. Actually, I don't think, I know this is the right work. So we started back with just a couple of schools that had a pre-K program and those are half day programs that operate in our schools, a morning program and an afternoon program. And the goal was to be inclusive. We wanted to make sure that we had all children who had access to the program and were able to thrive. So our goal has been to expand pre-Ks into all of our title schools. We currently are serve, having, uh, serving students in 11 schools and we grow to approximately two schools a year. I think it's so fantastic that these public preschools are available to the communities in Beaverton. Um, pub Preschool should be public for all of us, for all of the families in, in Oregon and nationally. Um, but this is like such, this is such an amazing opportunity to be um, rooted in your community that you're going to be transitioning into. I think something about early learning values is like so um, rooted in love <laughs> and and that's not to say that um, teachers that are teaching older children don't love their students um, but there is something incredibly pure about creating community and loving each other and knowing each other that um, that I, I wonder if it gets lost as we move through the older grades and that should always be the foundation of education. I see early learning as the foundation of everything that we do. It's like building a house. We're putting the building blocks in place to support children and their families for the rest of their lives. For many of them, if it's their first experience in school, it's really important that we give them the best experience possible. So that means that we need to be responsive to their needs. We need to be available to meet them where they're at. And our classroom spaces really need to be developmentally appropriate. Uh, well, I feel very fortunate that we have principals who have really embraced this work. And I think one of the reasons they've embraced it is when they've seen it in their building, when they've seen their pre-K kiddos and those children move from pre-K to kinder, they see the impact of this work. And I think that is something that is, is not something you know we expected to see as much as we have. But when those parents already feel connected to a school, they feel like they have a place. But when their children have already felt successful in pre-K, they want to come to kindergarten. They can't wait to be there and participate in kindergarten, which is why the alignment of practices is so important because we want children to go from a pre-K environment that was rich and child-centered and we want them to move into a kindergarten program that is also child-centered. The neat thing now is that after I did pre-K, it started infusing into kindergarten. So not only am I bringing them to where kindergarten used to start, they're bringing that down to kind of merge that alignment between the two. So it's been, that's been the neatest aspect of watching the last couple of years. Like I did a couple of trainings the first year or two on habits of mind. It was new to the whole school. So I would have things up in the hallway about what we were doing in pre-K. And then we had a couple just team meetings even before CI of how does, what would it look like in kindergarten? That's kind of where we started. Um, how does the shift change from how we're exploring the loose parts? How do you use those as a learning tool in kindergarten? And then in the years since then, after it's kind of been gone up to kindergarten, it's how would these same tools be used in first and second grade? And I think we're kind of thinking beyond that now. I see alignment being powerful for multiple reasons, both for the child's learning experience. We want children to have experiences that are um, basically aligned as they go through their elementary experience because then they're building on things that they're learning in previous grades, as well as um, alignment is really powerful for our educators because what we know is that Collective efficacy is one of the things that are most important for student outcomes. And collective efficacy is teachers believing that they can have an impact on, child, on children's lives and that the work they do matters. And the idea of it being 
it, that it's beyond efficacy. It's the collective piece where the alignment comes in because that's the teachers working together to build something that they believe. Then to be able to build on that and articulate that up through the grades is something that we've been able to do here at VOS where the kindergarten students who are entering our school or even our pre-K students, when they go to the next level, they're able to experience the same kind of opportunities in the same kind of environment that just capitalizes on their strengths and their assets they bring. And then each year, each grade level is able to better support those students because those teachers are receiving training and support from their peers to be able to pre be prepared and ready to support those students. And what really it comes down to is the habits of mind for me is something that we can't argue in regards to what it prepares kids with, with being able to be creative problem solvers, collaborators, being able to have opportunities to be able to expand their learning. It, it is unparalleled in being able to support what, what our employers are expecting, what our higher level education uh, areas are expecting for our kids. To me, it's a trajectory that launches children into the best success that they can have in their life. And I don't think anyone would argue with that being a trajectory you wouldn't want to see for every student in our schools. My hope is that we create societies where um, we seek to understand each other and to interact with each other and play and collaborate together. Right? And when something challenging does come up, something that we're feeling or we're noticing amongst other people, that we can come together and have conversations to better understand each other. And I believe that the work of Playful Inquiry um, creates a society where we'll start moving together and in, uh, in collaboration. Um, Vose is a really beautiful example because the work that they've been doing with CI, they're doing it across grade levels, even though this is the work of early learning, you know, they're doing it with teachers across grade levels. They're doing it with specialists, the counselors are involved, the parents are offering their voice and sharing what they desire or asking questions like, what does this mean? You know, and then once we had all these adult voices on, the teacher said, but what about the children? When are we going to start collecting the children's voices? I don't think you really can do any work without play with kids. Because that's how kids communicate. Um, that's how they make, uh, that's how they make connections. It's how like they experience the world. Um, so if you're not like talking to them through play, then how are they going to like make those connections? It's also super relationship building, and and like we know that like change doesn't happen uh, without relationship, and if you um, and that's how learning happens too. I think all, all good things happen from good relationships, and that's how I mean that's how I build a relationship with a kid is to play with them and to find out the things that they love to do. I think it's really important the work that we've been doing around playful inquiry here at Bose as well as other schools helps us align in a lot of ways to our future, come our district strategic plan. There's been an emphasis around early learning and around helping make sure our, our youngest learners have the best foot forward. It has to be a priority. You, ha you have to make constant decisions. It means working with our cabinet, working with our superintendent, working with our board, um, working with our community. As a community meeting, parents have to come to the school and some of the voices aren't being heard. So to me, equity is a driver for everything we do. And preschool, having kids have the opportunity to have the opportunity to have access and opportunity and inclusion in preschool programs, regardless of their language, regardless, regardless of what they look like. That's a, what I call a moral obligation of the system. That's our moral obligation. And to me, budgets are moral documents because what you believe in, you fund. So having it be very structured and be very intentional creates a sustainability of programming. I definitely think any kid who wants to be in a program like this pre-K program should have access to it. So I think the buy-in from community and the money from the community is absolutely, <laughs> it has to happen because the like I said, the difference between the kids at the beginning of the school year to the end of the school year, it was beautiful. The, their ability to communicate with one another, to communicate with staff, to communicate with me, another adult, a safe adult in their life, um, and their ability to feel confident in their skills that they had honed that year, it's just irreplaceable. Yeah.
I think everybody should have that opportunity. A few years ago, which is where farmers bring things that they make or, or grow on their farms and they sell it, right? So people can take home fresh food and fresh things. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Small. just be careful with it. Right. I wanted to just get blue. I'll just put it here. I'll just put it here. Thank you, Ellen. No problem. Like what? This will do. You are done so. with it, okay? Yeah. Do you want to learn how to sew? Yeah. yeah. Thank you.